Hi readers, welcome back to my channel. It's Juan here. I hope you're doing great. If you're new here, I make videos about books, very often classic literature. And today we're talking about one of my favorite novels, The Magic Mountain by the German writer Thomas Mann. If you're new to my channel, I post book reviews a couple of times a week. So if you're into reading, please hit the like button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my content. And please subscribe and share my videos with other readers you know. So The Magic Mountain was first published in 1924 and its original title is Der Zauberberg. The English version is by the American translator Helen Tracy Lowe Porter, who translated all the works by Thomas Mann into English. Now, I hope this doesn't put you off, but Lowe Porter is the great-grandmother of Boris Johnson, who at the time of making this video is still the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. There is also a more recent translation by John Edwin Woods, but I haven't read that one. Anyway, I'm linking to the different editions of The Magic Mountain in English and in German in the show notes. I would like to begin by telling you an interesting story behind the writing of The Magic Mountain. So Thomas Mann apparently was inspired to write this novel after his wife, who suffered from a lung complaint, spent some time at a sanatorium in Davos, Switzerland. So Mann went to visit her once and what he experienced up there inspired him to write this novel. Now the first chapter in The Magic Mountain entitled Arrival is based on Mann's impressions when he traveled to Switzerland to visit his wife. And you need to at least read that first section. Mann had already published a long short story entitled Death in Venice that dealt with sickness and death in a serious tragic way. So the original idea for The Magic Mountain was to write another short story that would deal with the same themes but with a comic tone. Let's see some of the connections between Death in Venice and The Magic Mountain. So while the protagonist of Death in Venice is an old man, in The Magic Mountain the protagonist is a naive young man. While Death in Venice takes place by the sea, the Magic Mountain is set high up in the Alps. Both stories are largely set in close spaces, a hotel, in the case of Death in Venice, and a sanatorium in The Magic Mountain. In Death in Venice, the object of sexual desire is Tazio, while in The Magic Mountain, a similar role is played by Madame Chocha. Mann started writing The Magic Mountain in 1912, but he stopped writing with the outbreak of World War I. The Magic Mountain came out after the war as a long novel and not a short story as the author had initially planned. The Magic Mountain is Thomas Mann's most famous novel and his favorite, and a great place to start if you have never read anything by him. The Magic Mountain is a Bildungsroman or a coming of age story about a young man from Hamburg named Hans Kastorp and the time he spent at a sanatorium in Davos. According to Thomas Mann, The Magic Mountain is also a Zeitroman or a time novel. Let's see why. So Hans Kanstorp is a student from Hamburg in the north of Germany. He takes a break to visit his cousin Joachim Simpson, who is suffering from tuberculosis and staying in a sanatorium in Switzerland. So the novel begins with a description of Hans's trip to the sanatorium. And it is one of my favorite openings in a novel. Hans is meant to stay with his cousin for two or three weeks, but he'll end up spending years in the sanatorium. Once Hans gets used to living up there, he'll never want to go back to the so-called flatlands again. Now, what makes the Magic Mountain a Bildungsroman is that Hans meets two people who become mentors to him. The first one is Settembrini, an Italian man who represents the ideals of the Enlightenment. And then, later in the novel, Nafta, a Jewish man turned Jesuit. Thomas Mann wrote Nafta as a parody of the Hungarian philosopher George Lukács, not to be confused with the American movie director. Both Settembrini and Nafta are great rivals in the novel as they personify two competing ideologies. Another important character in the novel is Claudia Shosha, who is a Russian woman who becomes the object of Hans Kastorp's sexual desire because she reminds him of a former schoolmate named Pribislav Hipper, to whom he was also deeply attracted. Hans Kastorp's greatest rival is the Dutch Minheer Peperkorn, who only enters the novel late into it and becomes Claudia Schoschat's lover. In the world of the Magic Mountain, up in the Swiss Alps, the concept of time is different from what we're used to down here. Our concept of time is largely linked to work or school, right? It is something we learn from a young age and we then think of it as something natural. We never stop to question it. We never stop to question the concept of time. But up in the sanatorium there is no work, no need to produce anything, no deadlines, no work days, no holidays. Every day is the same. All the patients need to do is rest and eat. 
Even a visitor like Hans Castorp needs to yield to that rhythm, and once he does, he cannot contemplate leaving the place and going back to the so-called real world. That's the magic of the mountain. Now, this novel is set in the years immediately before World War I, and what we get is a microcosm of European elites represented by the international cohort of bourgeois patients in the sanatorium. The Magic Mountain is so complex that it is a challenge to talk about it. I've read it twice, which, by the way, is what Thomas Mann recommended his readers to do. And I endorse that because I enjoyed it a lot more on a second read. I really want one thing to come across. I want to say that this novel is funny in both senses of the world. So The Magic Mountain is strange, but it also made me laugh a lot. I had a great time with it, and I want people to experience the same thing. Now, The Magic Mountain will not be the right novel for everyone, but you will know whether it is for you or not just from reading the first few pages. The Magic Mountain is the best novel about what being ill feels like that I have ever read. And there is something feverish about this novel. Up in the mountain, the weather doesn't follow the patterns that we're used to down here. The seasons don't mean the same thing. And time, as we have seen, doesn't have the same meaning either. All of this, coupled with the long philosophical conversations involving Settembrini and Nafta, Hans Kastorp's desire for Claudia, his memories of his first love, uh, Pribislav, Everything contributes to that reading experience. I know that when you hear that this novel is about illness and death, you probably expect something grim and depressing. So I feel like I need to emphasize once again that The Magic Mountain is a comic novel. It is one of the funniest things I have ever read. I also think that The Magic Mountain is one of the most accessible great novels of its time. For example, think that Ulysses by James Joyce is also from the same period, more or less. So we tend to think, or at least I do, that the great novels from around the 1920s were all experimental and hard to read, but that is not the case with The Magic Mountain. So I would actually recommend it to everyone.